Yasmin Koresh. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I was very disappointed in the gracious speech, as it failed to deal with a number of things which really mattered to my constituents and I believe to the country at large. First and foremost, and we've heard this mentioned many, many times today, the cost of living crisis, which is clear. Inflation is nearing 10%. Economic growth revised down. Slowest recovery in the G7. Interest rates up. And real wages have fallen below 2008 level. The impact of this on my constituents and people across the country is huge. They're having to choose between heating and eating, a phrase that's been used quite a lot today. But these choices are real, not imagined as some members on the opposition would like to suggest. This government is refusing to help these people. Why? I'm not trying to be controversial here, but perhaps fundamentally, certain people in the government don't care and they hold the ordinary people in contempt. Why do I say that? And where does this rot start from? The current Prime Minister in 1995 penned an article in The Spectator claiming that working class men are likely to be drunk, criminal, aimless, feckless and hopeless. Did he stop there? No. He said that the children of single mothers are ill-raised, ignorant, aggressive and illegitimate. It's been like the pot calling the kettle black. One might ask, well, perhaps the Prime Minister is just one bad apple. Wrong. The current Deputy Prime Minister, the Secretary of State for Business, the Home Secretary and the Foreign Secretary co-authored a pamphlet in 2011 which claimed <coughs> the British are the most, among the most idlers in the world. Well, I would like them to come to Bolton South East and tell that to the care assistant, the cleaners, the retail workers, who are often working more than 50 hours a week on minimum wage just to make ends meet and see their reaction and what they have to say to this. And then we had a Home Office Minister on the morning round a couple of days ago saying, well, people can move to better paid job or take on more hours to address the crisis. Well, in my constituency, there are not many better paid jobs, and everyone is already working more than they need to do. And then, of course, we had the member for Ashwell claiming people can cook meals for 30p and implied poverty was a choice. But can I say to him, as somebody who actually cooks quite regularly, I can tell you that you can't get a meal for 30p, even when you're cooking at home. And people in my constituency of Bolton South East, many have them written to me feeling very insulted and saying that they can't actually afford to use their ovens because of the energy cost. So I say it's frankly insulting to my constituents. There is another option though, a real plan to fix the cost of living crisis. In the first three months, Shell has made £5 billion in profit and BP has made £7 billion in profit. That has been made through us, the consumers, being charged. The Labour Party has constantly asked for and has been pushing for a windfall tax on oil and gas companies, which so far seems to have been falling on deaf ears. And this would be a real fund, a support package for working families not the £150 which is going to be is a loan being given which people will have to repay. We've also suggested that the lowest paid, the VAT on the energy bill should be removed. We said the universal credit allowance should be increased. A benefit which I know the government thinks that somehow it's all for those people who are not working. In fact, many of the people who receive universal credit allowance are actually people who are working, but their pay is so low that they still need to rely on state benefits. And by the reduction of the universal credit allowance of £20 per week, it's affected 14,000 of my constituents. It was a really very important piece of benefit that they had. And then, of course, we've asked for a warm homes discount, which would help towards that as well in keeping energy bills down. Of 
course, their situation is exacerbated by that. Often they have damping their homes as well, which has not been sorted out. Yet the government keeps saying they refuse to act and they won't because they said, well, they, there's not money for it. But we know the £39 billion wasted on the track and trace which the same system in France costs only about three billion to roll out. So the money is there if there is a will to use it. There is also nothing in the budget that would lead to better infrastructure of trams and trains in my constituency. There is nothing about building more social housing and affordable housing, especially the use of brownfield sites to fulfil the housing shortages. And on the renewable, the government says we're interested on it, we're interested in climate change, yet there could be real investment, which the Labour Party has again argued, which would create good jobs and, of course, eventually lead to us having redundant dependency for energy supplies to other countries, as the Ukraine war has shown. This was a missed opportunity to deal with many issues, including the foremost about living crisis. This government has refused to do that. And as far as I am saying, I would say they really don't care about my constituents.